Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I've got the Wilson Rush Pro 4.0, and these are all the reasons you may or may not want to buy them. Here we go. And just as a heads up, the fine folks at Tennis Point USA did send me these shoes for review. Of course, all opinions are still my own. They don't tell me what to say, and you know, I still just pretty much say what I want anyway. However, if you do want to pick a pair up of these, I do have a link in the description below. Now, the uppers are a much more elastic mesh than I'm used to with some Wilson shoes. All the lace eyelets are outriggers, so you do have to pull them pretty tight to get the uppers to sink down. And I have found that it does take a little bit more break in to get these things to envelop your foot a little bit more. So at the beginning, you're not going to get as much containment as maybe say something like the Adidas Barricade. However, they're a lot more plush in the uppers, a little more expandable and not as more rugged or hard like like previous versions of the Rush Pro. And if you look at the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, it does get through that first layer here of the DuraGuard on the inside. Now this does have a little bit of more ergonomic drag guard here on the inside for toe dragging. You just got to watch if you're a real extreme toe dragger, like you're really planning flexing the foot you might start to rip through this here but as long as you kind of use kind of your standard big toe joint to slide you should get some pretty good wear durability plus the outsole tread does come up on the outside of the shoe so just kind of watch that one area for a little bit less drag guard protection than others now getting into the midsole teardown this is where the 4.0 really kind of jumps up from previous models which were almost kind of brick like in the midsole Whereas this two density midsole foam with a little more of a forgiving shank. Now it's still that same 4D shank they talk about where it kind of goes in multiple directions in the shoe, kind of cradling the forefoot as well as the rear foot. However, it does stop right here in the heel so you're not kind of sitting on plastic and in the forefoot, much less dense foam. So your forefoot does have a little bit more forgiveness. Just remember, watch out for that bottoming over time because that will bottom faster than the more high density foam in the rear foot. And speaking of the densities of foam, if you look at the jump height test, 37 centimeters, which is pretty decent for a tennis specific shoe. The shank on these is not as stiff as previous models, so you're not getting as much of a diving board effect on these. The one thing you are getting is more ground feel and ground contact from there. So you're sacrificing a little bit of leverage and launch on these for a little bit better court feel. Now the treads are the most surprising part of the Rush Pro 4.0 because it's mostly a linear pattern with just some triangles cut in right at the forefoot. So it seems like you're gonna slip around a lot. And when the shoe was new on the shuttle test, really did not go so well. I was not used to how much they let you slide. But once the rubber warms a little bit, you actually get some really nice pivoting on those triangle portions of the tread, as well as some easy sliding into shots. Plus with the durometer of the rubber, its test of hardness being off the charts, these are a really good pick for someone looking for the ultimate in outsole durability who slides on a hard court a lot. And if you look at the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I mean, these things barely buckled to that thing at all. You can barely Tell I did the test. So if you're looking for something with really hard rubber, something that's gonna last you a while for a slider, these are definitely your shoe. Just remember, they do need some warming and breaking in before you get to that real sweet spot. And getting into the fit of the 4.0s, this is really where you have to pay attention to them because they do have a pretty decent inflare in them. Now they are much more forgiving in the uppers. They will expand better for more foot types. So a medium foot can go true, narrow can go true. And I think a wide, if you go up one half size, you're gonna get a pretty decent roomy fit in these. Even going standard size, you can break them in. However, if you are more of an out flared foot with a wide wider foot, you probably want to look somewhere else because they are so inflared. So you might just be a mismatch there. So if you're more of a neutral foot or a little bit of an inflared foot and you're wide, they're going to fit fine. But out flared, just probably look somewhere else because the break-in is going to be a little bit more extensive. And in terms of the all-important playability, you know, the 4.0s have a much different playing profile than predecessors. You know, you would expect that because they are built a lot differently than their predecessors. These are much more of a kind of close to the ground, a little bit more of a prowling feel. You do get a lot better of a feel from these than previous models, which like I said, a little more board-like, just meant for durability and being able to stand on them all day. But whereas these ones are, do have just a little bit of a tackier feel on the ground once you warm the rubber up, that is. And they just do kind of flow with your foot a little bit better. They're a little bit more forgiving going side to side. Now you do have enough lateral containment because of the chassis here, especially on the lateral side of the shoe on the uppers. So they still retain that real rock solid side to 
to side feel, just a little bit more forgiveness underfoot. And I do like that because like I said, previous models, super durable. Yeah, just not as forgiving on your foot. You'd need an orthotic in these. Whereas these ones, I didn't get that feel. Much more of a plush ride underfoot. Even with the harder, denser foam in the rear foot, it was still a much more pleasant experience than previous models. But with that being said, I still think they fit the same type of player profile. Someone that is a very aggressive baseliner going east to west a whole lot. And someone that is spending a lot of time sliding on the court and really needs a shoe to hold up over match and match and match. You know, these shoes are really kind of meant as more of a ballistic type outsole tread. They are really meant to be attacked. They're not more of like a dainty shoe meant for more fluid footwork. These are meant for more industrial footwork. So if you're someone that needs a shoe that's gonna hold up to a lot of shuffling, a lot of screeching, these are your shoe. If you're looking for something that's just a very kind of light and buttery shoe, you're gonna wanna look toward more of the minimalist shoe category, more like the vapor line type category. Like I said, these are much more of an industrial shoe, much more meant to get beat up. And if you're looking to take these on different surfaces, I think if the clay is pretty well maintained, it stays moisturized, these triangle cutouts will pivot and cut in the clay pretty well. However, if you are playing on pretty bone dry clay, because the tread is more linear, you may experience some slipping when going front to back, not necessarily side to side. So just watch out for that. If you do want these for clay, either watch out for the clay version of these to come out or just make sure that cord is watered before you get on it. But of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think the little more plush upgrades of the 4.0 are a true upgrade or are you going for something more like the 3.0, 3.5 line? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you wanna see the rest of the best new shoes of 2022 in the tennis category, make sure you click into this playlist up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you in the next video.